In my quest to make my services highly available, I started to look for ways to fail over an IP address from one machine to another. When I started on this quest, I thought I'd find something large and complex or require additional hardware or something that was only available to the highly trained system admins. But basic HA doesn't need to be complex or require additional hardware. It can be done with a small service and a little bit of config. And that's when I discovered Keep Alive D. Keep Alive D is a framework for both load balancing and high availability that implements the Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol, or VRRP for short. This is a protocol that you see in some routers and has been implemented inside of Keep Alive D. It creates a virtual IP, or otherwise known as a VIP or floating IP, that acts as a gateway that routes traffic to all participating hosts. And this VIP can provide high availability in this type of setup. In this configuration, one node is set to active and one or many nodes are set to passive. And all nodes listen and communicate on the VRRP network. And only the master in this configuration responds to requests. In the event that the master fails VRRP communication between the nodes, it will quickly fail over to a standby host, making it the new master and now controlling the VIP, and overall limiting the downtime and increasing the availability of your services. Worth mentioning too that Keep Alive D can also be configured in a load balancer configuration. In this configuration, both nodes have a virtual IP and a load balancer, serving traffic from real servers behind them. In this scenario, the traffic from the client is routed to the load balancer and then to the real server. And then the real server itself responds directly to the client. This configuration provides a high level of availability because any one of your load balancers or real servers could fail simultaneously while still keeping your services alive. <laughs> this is a more complex configuration for sure, but it illustrates how flexible and how reliable Keep Alive D can be. And I know this might sound difficult to set up, but it's much easier than you think. So today we'll be covering Keep Alive D and setting it up in a high availability scenario. We'll install and configure it in an active passive mode with a VIP so that you can supply high availability services to your network. We'll conduct a few tests to make sure your services fail over properly, and then we'll walk through some advanced use cases for Keep Alive D with something like Pi-hole. And we'll do all this with a few simple commands and config that I'll be providing to you. And you can find the link to that in the description below. And if that sounds good to you, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. So, what do you need? We'll need a minimum of at least two servers. Now these can be any flavor of Linux you like, but I'm gonna run this on Ubuntu server. And that's about all you need. Once you have these two servers up and running, you wanna make sure that you have a dedicated IP address for each. Now this can be with a static IP address that you assign on each node individually, or it can be a DHCP reservation that gets handed out to these two nodes. Or you can take the belt and suspenders approach and apply both. But either way, you wanna make sure that these IP addresses on these nodes do not change. Next, you wanna make note of the IP address. You can find this by typing IP space A. And as you can see on my nodes, the first one is 192.168.30.31, and the other one is 192.168.30.32. Next, we'll want to make sure that our apt repositories are up to date. And you can do this by running sudo apt update. Next, we'll want to run sudo apt install keep alive D. And I've also found on some systems, you might need lib IP set 13, which is a network utility for Linux. Then, after that's installed, all we need to do now is configure keep alive D. So first, we'll focus on the first node in this group. We'll want to create a config file at etc keepalived slash keepalived.conf. And this file doesn't exist yet, so don't be surprised if you don't see any configuration inside. And the configuration that goes inside of that file should look like this. Now there are probably a lot of properties in here you don't understand, so let's talk about them. So first we have vrrp underscore instance. So this is our instance of vrrp, and it's an identifier to point back to it. And we're gonna name ours vi underscore one. This can be anything you want, but it needs to be consistent across all of our nodes. Next, we're defining the default state when this instance stands up. And the default state we want this one to be is master. Now the other option is backup, but you'll see that later. But in this configuration, this node is going to be the master if both are in a good state. Next is the network interface that we'll be running on. So here I have ENS 18. Now, how did I find that? If you remember when we found the IP address for this node, we could also see the interface that this one is running on. So the interface I have is ENS18. So we'll just wanna plug it into there. 
Next is virtual router ID, and this can be anything as long as they match across instances. So I'm just choosing 55. Next is priority, and this is how it determines which one will be master. And generally speaking, the backup, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, should be lower than the priority on the master. So I'm choosing 150. Next is advert int or the advertisement interval, and I'm setting it to one. And this is actually the default value, but I like to explicitly set it to one so I know it's there later if I need to tweak it. But this is the interval or how often it will advertise itself to the other nodes. And next are properties for unicast. Now this isn't really needed. It will actually multicast if you don't have this, but I'd rather set up unicast and define the nodes that it's gonna advertise to. So I'm gonna set the unicast source IP, this is a typo, to this machine or this node, and then unicast peer is going to be our other node, which is 32. And next up is our authentication block. And this is so we can supply authentication to our VRRP instances. And this isn't necessary, but it's a really good idea to set this with an auth type and a password for it. And this can be anything you want it to be, so keep it secure. But I'm setting the auth type as password and the auth pass as some random string. And this will need to match on all the nodes that we're configuring. And this last block is virtual IP address or our BIP. So this is the virtual IP that is going to create that all of our other services will communicate with. And this should also be an IP address on your network that's not already taken. So in this case, I'm saying that my VIP is 192.168.30.100. And before we apply this configuration, it's worth mentioning that Keep Alive D supports a lot of different configurations. You can find this on their documentation page. So if you're thinking of doing something more advanced, like emailing when something goes wrong, or a track script to see if the service is alive, check out the documentation for more info on that. So now that we have a configuration looking pretty good, let's copy this and apply it to our first node and then save it. Now we can enable Keep Alive D using sudo systemctl enable dash dash now keepalived.service. And if we want to check the status, we run sudo systemctl status keepalivedservice. And we can see here it's active and running. One thing that caught my eye in the logs, and I'm glad I caught this, is right here, line 14, truncating auth pass to eight characters. So that means it only supports up to eight characters. Now, if you use the same password on both machines, it really doesn't matter, but we should probably limit that password to eight characters. So rather than having Keep Alive D truncate that password for me and having a debugging nightmare sometime in the future, let's just change that right now to eight characters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And let's update the password now in our config and save it. Then we'll restart the service. Then we'll check the status again. And now we can see it's not truncating our password. Okay, let's take care of the other node now. So our second instance is almost a copy and paste of the first. We'll just need to update a couple of things. So we'll wanna keep the same instance of vi underscore one. We'll wanna change the state to backup. We'll keep the interface as the same interface, unless your machine has a different interface name, but I showed you how to get that. The virtual router ID is going to be the same. And then for priority, we'll actually lower it to 100. This kind of seems backwards to me because normally a lower priority means a higher priority. But what I learned is actually you want a higher number on your master than you do on your backup. I guess it kind of makes sense after saying it out loud now. So we'll just want to make sure that this is lower than our master. So our master was 150. We'll set this one to 100. The advertising interval we can keep as one. And then so our unicast source IP is now this machine that we're on. And this machine, the second node is .32. And our peer that we're unicasting to is .31. Next, in the authentication block, we're gonna keep the same thing. Auth type is password and the auth pass is our password. Remember, this needs to be eight characters. We just learned right before this. And next, our virtual IP address is going to be that same VIP. So 192.168.30.100. So now we can copy this configuration and then go into our second node. Make sure you're in your second node. Check the IP address. This one is .32. Then we'll want to create or edit this configuration file. And then we'll paste our contents inside and then we'll save it. Then we'll want to enable Keep Alive D on this machine. Then we'll want to check its status. So the status looks good. Now that both of those machines are up and configured, let's do some quick diagnostics. First, we'll ping our master node, and we can see here, that's responding. Then we'll ping our backup node, and we can see that's responding. Now we'll ping our VIP, and you can see that's responding. So congratulations, so far Keep Alive D is up and working as it should. 
we're pinging this VIP and we're getting a response back. Now that response is coming from our master node, but let's make sure we have a highly available VIP right now. So on the right side, I'm pinging our VIP. And on the left, I'm remoted into our master and on the bottom left, I'm remoted into our backup. So let's actually stop the service that's running on the first one. So sudo systemctl stop keepalive.d.service. And if we stop that, we can see that our VIP is still responding. And just to prove our point, let's actually stop it on the backup as well. So if we stop it on the backup, you can see that on the right side now, the VIP is no longer responding. So let's actually start it back up and you can see it's responding again. And let's start it on our master. And of course, it's still responding. But when I started it on the master now, that one actually took over. So how do I actually know which one is the master right now in serving traffic? Well, if you remote into either one of those and look at the status or the logs, we can see here in the output, this machine right here, which is the backup, entered backup state initially, then became master, and then became backup state. So I'll keep this open on the right, and on my master, I will actually stop it now, stopping the service. And if we look at the logs again, we can see it's entering master state. So let's start this back up on the master. Now, if we look at the logs again, we can see it received a master advertisement, letting it know that, hey, the master's back up, and now we're entering a backup state. So pretty awesome. So far we have high availability ping. I know, not the greatest. Let's apply this to something simple like Nginx. So in this example, I'm gonna set up Nginx on both nodes, but really this could be any service that you have on two nodes that you wanna provide high availability with. So in this example, I'm gonna spin up Nginx really quick using Docker. Now this doesn't have to be Docker, doesn't have to be containerized, it can be anything but I'm using Docker because it's easy to spin up and it's easy to clean up with afterwards. But if we run this command, this should spin up Nginx and I've created a really simple index.html that I'm mapping to. And again, all of this will be in the documentation if you want to try this out. So if we spin that up, we should now have Nginx running on port 8080 on this machine. And if we go to that first node, we can see hello world one. So this is actually working. And once we're in our second node, our backup node, we're going to do the same thing except for the index.html that I create here now, I'm gonna say hello world two. So in here, it's gonna say hello from secondary node as the title, which you don't see. And then I'm gonna say hello world two. Save that. And then I'm gonna run that same Docker command we ran before, which is spinning up Nginx, mapping a volume to Nginx to the inside of an Nginx HTML folder, which maps our index.html, and then some ports. It's gonna pull it down and spin it up. And once that's up, you can go to the IP address of your second node, but now we see hello world too. So this is hitting that IP address directly. So this means both nodes are up individually, but we're not hitting the VIP yet. So let's hit the VIP. So the VIP, if you recall, was .100. And here we see the VIP responding with hello world one. So this means the traffic's being served from our master node, which is exactly what we want. Now let's introduce a chaos monkey and let's stop the first node. So on the left side, you can see I'm hitting the VIP and we're getting hello world one. And now let's stop keep alive D on our primary node and let's refresh. And now we're getting hello world from the second node. Super awesome. So let's start this back up. Refresh. And now one takes back over. So <laughs> super awesome. Now we have a highly available Nginx. And this is great, unless you're not using Nginx. So let's talk about some real world scenarios. In my home lab services tour, I talked about how I had three Pi-hole instances. I have my primary and my secondary and my tertiary, um, but I have three. So the first one is a virtual machine. The second one is also a virtual machine, but the third one's actually a Raspberry Pi. But you might be asking, how do you supply three DNSs to your client? Don't they just have a primary and secondary? Yes. I think that's the right answer. So yes, generally speaking, you have a primary and secondary DNS. But the way that I've set this up is that my secondary DNS is actually my VIP. So that VIP that we just talked about, your virtual IP address, that floating IP, can be your secondary DNS. So let's imagine for a second that you've installed and configured Keep Alive D on both of your Pi Hole instances. You would actually do the same thing. You would configure a node one and a node two. You would configure it in an active and passive mode. You would create a VRRP instance. You would set the state of one of those machines to master 
and the other one to backup, you would check to make sure you have the right interface, router ID, priority, advertisement interval, and the same idea with our unicast source IP and our unicast peer. So exactly the same configuration. This will work for anything. And you'd want to configure authentication and your auth type and your password, the same exact thing, and also then a VIP. So here's the important piece right here. If you're doing this with two PyHole instances, this would be your secondary DNS. So let's say, for instance, currently your secondary DNS is 192.168.100.2, if I hit two properly, two. This would be the DNS that your DHCP hands out or the DNS you configure for all of your clients or your secondary DNS or your primary DNS. You can do it on either. But this allows you to configure one DNS VIP that's backed by two DNS servers. So in this example, here are my two secondary DNS servers but they're backed by one VIP. So PyHole 2 has a private IP and PyHole 3 has a private IP, but I've exposed their VIP that they share as my DNS server. So in an optimal scenario, my PyHole 1 and PyHole 2 are serving all the traffic, but when PyHole 2 goes down, PyHole 3, that was the backup instance, then becomes master and starts serving traffic until PyHole 2 comes back up. And so if you already have DNS configured and PyHole configured, what I recommend doing is just keeping your same IP that you have for your DNS servers, but converting one of those to a VIP and reassigning the IP address on each PyHole server, the physical connection, the NIC, to a new IP address, and then exposing it through this VIP right here. Then after you do that, I highly recommend you use something like Gravity Sync to keep those two PyHole instances in sync. So that as you make changes to one PyHole instance, those changes will synchronize down or back and forth to each available node. And I've already documented this in a video. And this is how you can have a true HA PyHole server and keeping all of your settings in sync. Now I know that we just scratched the surface of what Keep Alive D is and how it can be used. And we've only covered a few use cases, but as I mentioned before, it can be used for high availability or as a load balancer or a combination of the two. Keep Alive D is an easy and lightweight solution to give you higher availability on all of your services. And so what do you think of Keep Alive D? Which services are you gonna make higher availability now that you can do it with Keep Alive D? Are you going to use some more complex configuration using load balancers? If so, let me know in the comment section below. And remember, if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Question: uh, My go-to OS, Linux OS in general, in general, is is Ubuntu. Boo, hiss, hiss, or hooray. I, I know there's so many flavors out there, uh, but I, I mean I've used Ubuntu since I, I, I figured this out the other day. Since version 4.10, that might date me. I don't know, but I mean you could you could imagine that's from 2004. But 4.10 I think was the first version of Ubuntu server that I ever used. Um, and ever since then, I've just, I, I mean, I felt kind of at home with uh, a Debian-based in install of, of Linux. 